We now leave Fife over the Forth Road Bridge, built in 1964 and Europe's fifth longest. Alongside is the rail bridge, dating from 74 years earlier. It took seven years, 59,000 tonnes of steel and the lives of 58 men to build. A third crossing is currently being planned. South Queensferry takes its name from Queen Margaret, who gave pilgrims free passage here on their way to St Andrews. A new arrival on the bistro scene here is Ravenous Beastie. After a full refurbishment, this Scottish bistro has emerged, offering traditional Scottish fare with a contemporary twist. It also features Roost at Ravenous, offering bed and breakfast accommodation in the rooms above, with outstanding views over the two bridges. It is located on West Terrace, a unique parade of shops built above the properties below. The only similar example to be found in Scotland is on Great Western Road in the west end of Glasgow. A short distance along the mid-terrace is a real find, Picnic Café, now under new ownership. This delightful little café offers teas, coffees, home baking and is ideal for light meals and snacks, which are available throughout the day. A little out of town is Dalmany Kirk, an outstanding, well-preserved Romanesque parish church dating from the mid-12th century, whilst Dalmany House is a 19th century Gothic extravaganza, seat of the Earls of Rosebery, open at times. Both are to be found in amongst the farmland that rises up from South Queensferry, which is also home to Craigie's Farm Deli and Café. This farm shop has really grown over the last few years. Packed full of fresh, organic and fair trade veg and fruit, alongside speciality cheeses, soups, fresh meat, home baking, jams, preserves, pies and patties. Don't miss the salads and cold meats from the famous deli counter. In the summer, the farm offers pick-your-own soft fruits. The cafe offers a taste of many items available in the farm shop and prides itself in serving slow food, carefully prepared from such fresh ingredients. We now bypass South Queensferry and head towards Hopeton House, whose setting, architecture and contents combine to make it one of Scotland's greatest houses. It's open to the public. In addition, a series of special events are held throughout the year. The Gate Lodge guards the long drive leading into a private and privileged world. The haha is very clear, a hidden wall and ditch which keeps the grazing stock away from the manicured lawns but is unseen from the house, giving the appearance of one large expanse of grass. The house is mainly the work of William Adam and his sons John and Robert. Indeed, Hopeton is actually portrayed on Adam's tomb at Greyfriars Kirk. Started in 1699 for the first Earl of Hopeton, who was ennobled at the age of 22 by King James II, because John Hope, the Earl's father, is said to have saved the life of the King in a shipwreck in 1682, when he himself was drowned. King George IV visited General Sir John Hope, the third Earl, in 1822 and knighted Sir Henry Rayburn. The name Hopeton was formerly attached to the village of Leadhills, on the vast estates of the Hopes and transferred here to Abercorn. The estate today is still run by the present Marquis, whilst the house was transferred to a charitable trust some years ago. Nearby is another National Trust for Scotland property, the House of the Bins, home to the DL family since 1612. The house contains a fascinating collection of portraits, furniture and porcelain. Tam Diel, a Labour MP for over 42 years, who, as the longest-serving Member of Parliament, was known as the Father of the House. His ancestor and namesake, General Tam Diel, was Commander-in-Chief of Scotland at the time of Charles II. He was ruthless in his persecution of the Covenanters, later imprisoned in the Tower of London, only to escape the country and subsequently commanded the Tsar's armies in Russia. <laughs>